Um, we're going to be talking about the processor again. We're going to be talking about how it goes through its scan cycles and the memory locations of a lot of these words that we're going to store this information in. So let's get started. The processor is a unit that houses the microprocessor, memory modules, and communication circuitry required to operate and to communicate with other I.O. and other equipment. The execution of the microprocessor's function is referred to as the processor scan. On startup, the processor runs an internal self-diagnostic first scan. If any part of the processor system is not functioning, such as a faulty memory, a comms fault, or any internal errors on that first scan, a light will turn on and it will not work for you. For the Micrologix 1400, the first scan is uh, the bit is S colon 1 slash 15. Microprocessor inside the processor again is a device that monitors the state and status of the input devices, solves the logic of the program, controls the state of the output devices, communicates with other all other devices, manages memory, and updates timers, counter, and internal registers. It is important to understand how the processor runs through a scan cycle to understand how the order of the program is executed. Execution or completion of the above tasks is referred to the processor scan cycle. Here's a picture of the scan cycle. So we need to know how it operates. So the first thing, after it's done its first diagnostic testing, it now goes on to step one here. It determines the status of the input devices. So it's going to go read all those input modules, input cards that are on that processor. Then it's going to interpret the logic of the program and it's going to solve the latter logic. And then third, it's going to update or turn on or off output devices. And fourth, it's going to communicate with everything, other PLCs or other equipment that are on that network and do housekeeping. The processor scan cycle takes a fraction of time and can complete it in a millisecond or microseconds. It's getting faster and faster. Cycle time is dependent on several factors, like the size and number of tasks, program instruction type, and memory that is used. So just like a computer, uh, the more memory, the more tasks it has to run through, the slower it gets. Also incorporated is a watchdog timer. As part, of the, as part of the processor's internal self-diagnostics, a watchdog timer is used. It sets a time limit for each, inter each scan. So if one of those scans takes longer than what it thinks it should, it will put the processor into a fault condition. Now let's start talking about the memory. There are thousands of memory storage locations where memory can be stored. Locations are divided into two classifications, user memory and storage memory. User memory is for storage of the user program that contains the relay logic and instructions to control the process. Storage memory, information such as status of the inputs and outputs, accumulated values of timers and counters, presets and accumulated values, etc. The actual memory structure of the PLC varies depending on the type and brand. Memory chips can be separated also into two groups. We have volatile and non-volatile. Volatile memory loses information when power is removed. Non-volatile memory retains stored information when power is removed. To protect, a battery is included in the processor or the power supply. So let's talk about the memory organization, memory words, and word locations. A PLC must control user program repeatedly and accurately at great speeds and is done so by using a binary signal, two states, one and zero. It makes it easy to process either on or off, not in between. The processor's memory consists of thousands of locations and they're referred to as words. Each word stores binary data or binary bits. Words can be 8 bits, 16 bits, 32, or 64 bits, depending on the PLC. An 8-bit word is called a byte, and a 16-bit word is called two bytes. 
For example, a PLC memory size is 256 words. Then it can store 4096 bits of information using a 16-bit word. So if it has 26 words and each of those bits are 16, that's how you get 4096. Or if it was only an 8-bit word, it'd be 8 times 256, which would give you 2048. So that is um, half your capacity. So it's really important when you uh, have your PLC that you figure out um, what size are the bit words so you actually know its capacity. When determining a PLC system memory size, knowing the number of bits per word is important. Stored information by each word having a number or having an address. Addressing schemes also identify hardware location, rack, module, and terminal number. So in this picture here, we have um, a byte, which is 8 bits, and we have information by each word having a number or having so an address. So we're going to look at the MicroLogix addressing template. The first part of the address is always the file type. Depending on what you're addressing, for an input, it's actually I, outputs O, timers T, counter is C. When you have something wired into an input module, it's always going to start with an I. If you're ever going to use a timer, you're always going to start with a T. So that's the file type. That is the location in which the information is going to be stored for that information. When you have an input, you wire it into a module to an input card. The location that that information can be found at is I. When the next number is going to be the actual slot number. When you look at a PLC, you have your power supply, and then you have your controller, and then you have the rest of your cards. For each of those cards, you have to say what the actual slot number. So what is it? So in this instance, we're saying zero. So the one, if we have a power supply, we have the CPU, and then we have an input card, we're going to say that's slot zero, and that is where this one's located. And then you have a dash, or a the backward slash and then you're going to have the actual terminal number in which uh, input is wired to. So here is an example of the data files that I took out of the user manual for the MicroLogix 1500 and you can see here that we have it, it shows us here for an output file the file identifier is O for an input file it's I for a status file is an S. An example of a status file is that first pass is a status file. Those are already pre-stored status information that the PLC has that we can use or look at when we're trying to figure out whereabouts perhaps troubleshooting something on the PLC. We have bit files and they start at B3. Uh, timer files are T4. Counter file is OEC5. And the control files, the same thing. So these are just some examples. So let me go into actually RS Logix 500 and I will show you exactly what we mean by these storage locations when we're programming. Here I opened up MicroLogix 1400. So this is the type of controller I have. If I go in here, controller properties, and you can see I've selected a MicroLogix 1400 Series B. And when I go and do that, that automatically creates all these data files. So by picking that processor, these are automatically are the properties for that processor that we have. So we can see here we have data files and here's our output data. This processor, these are the output word locations for uh, that processor. And you can see here, as I go over top, you can see the little box that shows up that says O colon zero slash zero. So whatever I physically wire into the terminal number zero on that physical PLC, if I turn this into a one by simply going one enter, that will turn on that output. But of course we want our, uh, we can do that for troubleshooting and stuff like that, but we want our program to turn that on and off. So the next one down here is our inputs. And can you see here that we have all our inputs here? And same thing, I colon zero slash zero. 
Same with inputs. I can't just turn it on like my outputs because they are physically, they're wired. But with an input, it's looking for a signal and we're not turning it on. So I'd have to see the actual input if this is a limit switch or a push button would actually come on. Have to be pressed or have to show me a logic level of 1 in order for this to have a 1 here. Here's our status bits and as soon as I click on those um, I can go in here and I can see different status bits that I can use. You can see here we have a power up to run. Uh, here's our first pass at S colon 1 slash 15. Here's a running clock if you want to refer to that. Scan times, you can, you can see your watchdog here and with this PLC Watchdog times 10 milliseconds, S3 high byte. So we can actually adjust that as well. So the watchdog timer is the default that's in there. That's how long one scan should not exceed the 10 milliseconds or else that watch, watchdog timer will come off. And there's other status bits in here as well. Here's our binary bits. They're just an internal memory storage location we can use to store information. There's nothing physically wired like an input or output, but we can use these word locations, these 16 bit word locations, to store information. Timer. Here we have just one timer, T4 colon 0. And with that timer, it has information in here that you can use for it on each of its bits for its word as well. Okay, and then also we have our counter. Same thing. This is our counter file within the counter. So you got your properties. Uh, C5 colon 0. You can do C5 colon 1, C5 colon 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up just like it had showed us how many counters that we could use. And we have our control file 2, 3, 4, 5. All two, three, four, five, all the way up, just like it had showed us how many counters that we could use. And we have our control files. We have our integer files as well. It's another storage location. You can use integers. So this is good for passing on information that are whole words, not data files. Based on the input image below for the Micrologix 1400, which statement could be true based on the values shown after the input scale? Based on the input image below for the Micrologix 1400, which statement could be true based on the values shown after the input scale? This is the location for the information from the input card. I colon 0, so slot 0, word 0, and bits 0 through 15 are the information storage location for the inputs that are wired to each of those terminals on the actual input module. A. A normally open push button wired to terminal 1 is actuated. If we have a normally open push button and it's actuated, the logic level should be a 1. We look at on the input table under bit 1 we have a logic level 0. A is false. It is not a true statement. B. A normally open push button wired to terminal 2 not actuated. A normally closed push button when it's not actuated gives a logic level of 1. If we look at bit 2 in the input image, it is a logic level 1. B is a true statement. C. A normally open push button wired to terminal 3 is actuated. A normally open push button, when actuated, gives a logic level of 1. If we look at the input image at bit 3, it is a logic level of 0. C is a false statement. D. A normally closed push button wired to terminal 2 is actuated. A normally closed push button that is actuated gives a logic level of 0. If we look at the input image at bit 2, the logic level is 1. D is a false statement. That concludes this tutorial on...